Welcome to Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann. I am so grateful that you're joining me on today's reminders. Now, today is a special one, and I believe it's a necessary podcast, YouTube post, because it's something that I've never really put two and two together. But being that mental illness is such a prevalent thing within our world, I just, I didn't see this as something that I had been dealing with. And until this morning at 5.55, I wake up this morning and I'm reminded of my life before 2003. Now, if you know anything about my testimony, I was woken up at 6 a.m. on March 6, 2003. I can remember where I was. I was in my bed in Minnesota, and this is really important to know because whenever someone would try to wake me up in times past, I would wake up violently most often, but this time when I woke up, I woke up to this gentle touch on my left shoulder, and when I woke up, I woke up so peacefully, but when I looked to my left, There was no one there. And I say this often, or so I thought. But I remember, I have this, I have this memory of rising up out of bed and going into the office, which was across the hall. And I shut the door behind me, grabbed the journal that I had bought the day before. I had never journaled before. Grabbed this journal that I bought the day before at this local grocery store. And I sat in front of the futon and I began writing praises to God. Now, you guys, I have to tell you, before that time, I was very negative, very moody. Um, just, I just thought it was normal to feel depressed. I thought it was normal to be moody. I thought it was normal. You wake up and however you feel is how, what everyone's going to get from you. And it was, you know, kind of that living of, well, this is who I am kind of thing without ever actually saying that out loud. And so I'm brought back to this memory this morning of, wait, I literally lived a life of depression most of my life, was never diagnosed with it. And little did I know what was going to unfold in the most beautiful way. But this is where it's important. And I hope you're hanging on and you're not going to keep scrolling past this because I think it's worth the wait. So I'm setting this up for a reason. So since 2003, God has helped me to know how to climb out of hopeless despair. Years ago, when I was making our bed I literally, as I was making the bed, I just felt this overwhelming darkness, but I didn't know it was darkness. I thought it was just the soothing, comforting thought. And it was just climb into bed for 30 days. Your son can take care of your daughter. It'll be fine. Just come on, just get in the bed. And as soon as I heard that, I mean, I literally was going to climb in that bed. Like it just sounded so incredible. And then I heard these words in my spirit, praise me as though your life depends on it because it does. Still at that point, I have no idea that I'm dealing with depression or oppression. So in this time frame in 2009, I began to write praises via my blog. And it was intentionally titled Triumphant Victorious Reminders. And here's why I believe it was reminders, because I remember people saying all the time, I'm going to remind God of what he promised me. And I thought, and even though I was young in the Lord, I was like, who do you think you are to think that you have to remind God? 
And it was in that moment that I'm having this thought process that I feel this revelation come upon me. The reminders are not to remind me, Teresa. The reminders are to remind yourself so that you can be pulled out of the pit of despair. I'm not having you praise me because I'm an egotistical God. The praise is what rescues you and opens your eyes to see and sense that I am near. How do we help people through depression? How do we help people through those those moments of you where you feel like you're just out of control with your thoughts? Where you feel like, oh my gosh, I am slipping into this abyss and it's, there's no turning back and it really feels like despair. It's hopelessness. It's darkness. It's this feeling of being alone that I can't even express. And all you want is death to soothe you. And this is when this morning I got this knowing That when God said, praise me as though your life depends on it because it does. When the praise stirred, it would lead me to go to his word or the word would stir out of me. The sadness and despair would then lift and his joy became so real and evident as my strength. It was as though the joy was no longer a thing or a, uh, like a, the joy wasn't just like a coping thing. It was actually, I was actually experiencing the presence of God, that the joy of the Lord is the person who was holding me up, strengthening me. I was feeling strength, not knowing it was not my own strength, but it was me being held by the God of all strength. There was this depression and moodiness that I lived in, and I thought it was normal. I was just never diagnosed. So as the Holy Spirit has been reminding me to go into praise, it's this continual reminder of how he rescues us. Again, I've learned that it's not because he's this egotistical, prideful God. And if we don't praise him, then we will be destroyed. It's not that. It's because praising him reminds us of who he is and how he has us. It's God's means of rescuing us from the enemy. It's his rescue of us seeing through the lens of hopeless despair and now seeing through the eyes and lens of Jesus as he is our true perspective. And then because of the despair, it's most likely what is happening to others around us. And so then from there, it's a leading to intercede for others who may be feeling the hopeless sadness. So it's no longer, it no longer has to be a triggering, debilitating thing in our life, but now it becomes equipping. I believe this is why God gave me triumphant, victorious reminders It's a sustaining. I still can't believe all of this is now coming to me. It's never occurred to me. However, in the last two weeks, I'm hearing of stories of Christians who are going through depression and they're doing it alone. And then suicidal thoughts have come into their into their thinking. They're not and they're not people who would think that way. So Think on that. You have healthy people that are experiencing this sadness. How much more for the ones that are going through the mental illness and don't know how, and they don't realize that they can equip themselves with renewing their minds 
and their thought process. It's the true prescription of how to stay in mental health. But this is an every day, every moment by moment, equipping, powerful exercise. It's not something that you, it's one and done. It's something that becomes a part of your life to where now it overflows to help others as well. But see, the reason why it must start with praise is because then if you don't know that the author and the finisher of your faith and of who you are in this life, then it becomes this repetitious, religious ideology of repeating something and affirming something in yourself that will only, it's like a high. It works for a minute and then the despair comes on heavier. And then when you try to affirm yourself even more, you can't get to that high like where you originally were. It's kind of like when you take that first hit of a drug, man, the euphoria, but it never, you can never get that first high back. But it's the same thing. But now on the opposite spectrum, when we begin to praise God, it actually gets better and better than the time before. You guys, I am not just sharing this with you just to waste my breath. I am not just sharing this with you because I believe that because this has helped me, this can help you. I know it will help you because it's the Lord and it's his way of knowing how our bodies and minds respond to his truth. Remember what praising God does is it opens our eyes to sense he is near. That not only, not only is he near, but he's closer than near and he's nearer than close. So today, this is how we're going to focus on God. We're going to do so by going to Psalm 34 and Psalm 103. Sometimes we're like, I want to be fixed on the Lord. I just don't know how. This is how. I'm giving you the how on staying fixed on the Lord. I'm going to give you the how on looking to him so that you are radiant with joy so that your face is never covered in shame. That's Psalm 34, 5. This is how we look to him for help. Is by going to his word and then saying, Holy Spirit, will you help me to read your word from your holy perspective as you point me to the Father? So this is what Psalm 34 says. I will praise the Lord. How often? Sometimes? Once a week? It says, I will praise the Lord at all times times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. So for those of you who have groups that come together and You come together because you have a commonality of depression. This is how you come together properly. Is you come together and you praise the Lord at all times. You boast about him. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. How did he answer him? In the way that he wanted to be answered, it says, he freed me from all my fears. See, oftentimes what praise does is it helps us to know how to pray according to what God wants us to pray, according to his will, to say, Lord, it is well with my soul. It is a place of surrender. It's not telling him the list of things you want and desire. It's literally when you start to praise him, you want what he desires. 
I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard and he surrounds and defends all who fear him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Now listen, those who praise him will learn to fear him. And when we fear him with such awe and wonder, knowing that we are more terrified of doing life without God than we are terrified of who he is. That's what the fear of the Lord is. It's just truly being terrified to do life without him. That's what the fear of the Lord is. I don't want to take one step without you, God, without being in awe and wonder of you, because my decisions change when I think on him first. Then go to Psalm 103. And Psalm 103 is beautiful. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. It's literally us saying to our mind, you will bless the Lord. Do you hear me, Teresa? You're going to bless the Lord and all that is within you. You're going to bless his holy name. And as you bless the Lord soul, forget not his benefits. Remember everything that he has done. He forgives all our sins and he heals us of all our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction and he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. These are his benefits. He satisfies our mouth with good things so that the youth, they're renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. To verse 19, it says, The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you as angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening into the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his host, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, soul. You're going to bless the Lord. Today, this is how we stay fixed on who God is by reminding ourselves to bless him. That is today's triumphant, victorious reminder with Teresa Ann. 